It's January 17th, and the California fires have settled down a little bit. And I thought I'd make a video talking a little bit about its impact and then the effect of amateur radio. As well as I kind of want to do a juxtaposition against Hurricane Helene and the amateur radio we re so, response we saw there, too, which was really inspiring. So the fires have quieted down, but we're not truly done with them, if you will. If you go to Cal Fire, the website will be in the video description, and you go to the incidents, I'd like to point out that that containment level that's often mentioned when it comes to fires, that talks about kind of the encircling of fire control around a fire. It's deeper than that, and you can look up more information. But when you say like 31%, that means like the areas of active fire, if you will, that have a containment around them of some kind, right? So that's that's kind of what they mean. But let's take a look at the Palisades fire. You can see it, it was devastating, right? Uh, along the coast in particular where many beautiful homes existed, it, it took out just tons of them. It's it's shocking to see this, and I'm not going to go into the politics of it. There's obviously a lot, and, and more we'll hear as the months goes on. But uh, uh, an incredible devastation, right? Tis the season, though, just for everybody that, that doesn't know much about California. This is about the time of year where we're at our driest, and we generally need rain in this season to kind of keep everything wet-ish uh, and, and try and keep the dead things alive longer, as well as, of course, containment on the ground by removing brush and all that stuff. is It should be done because this is like the worst time of year because we couple that with the intense winds that we get here in California. On the other side, Altadena, and, and this is where we're going to spend, or Eaton Fire, is we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this because this is where kind of the biggest impact it to radio was and, and it goes beyond radio too because if we if we zoom in here let's let's go ahead and take a look right here at the top is mount wilson mount wilson is a communications hub for not just amateur radio but for television in the south bay area as well as com commercial radio all that stuff and uh the the site you know the summit if you will was in danger for a while my understanding is that it's no longer in danger and there was not a lot of loss of equipment or anything like that which means that communications never really went down right if we take a look here there's a couple of articles on putting the broadcast towers at risk here in Mount Wilson. You can see the fire coming up over the top as well as an observatory that's that's right there as well, right? So that was in danger. And while the devastation of the fires was absolutely immense, the, the key thing to remember is that unlike Asheville and Hurricane Helene, those impacted, we never really lost communication and we never really lost power. There were pockets of that that happened and there were people that were kind of secluded because they couldn't get out. There was literally stories of you know, cars that people just had to get out of and leave their cars on the road on these jam-packed streets and then they took bulldozers and pushed the vehicles off the road. Yeah, that all happened, but it was nothing like in Asheville where roads were completely eroded by fast moving water and people were physically shut off from anyone with vehicles being able to get to them. That's why you saw helicopters, even donkey crews that were coming in to bring supplies and, and aid and care and, and people. But from a communication standpoint, of course, there were some damage that was done in this case in the, in the Palisades. Since so many of those homes and areas were, were burnt up and destroyed, there was a repeater that was taken out of commission. And the American Legion here, the Ronald Reagan Palisades Port 283, did end up putting a repeater back into use, into operation after the fires, which is great to hear as well. And sure, there were lots of people who were helping out in the form of radio amateur operators. And one who gets a shout out in the AWRL is one Gordon West, uh, WP6NOA as he was deployed as a volunteer as a part of the Firewatch program in Orange County. So if you're not familiar with this, we, as I mentioned, this is the season when we have a lot of issues with wildfires, and there are groups of amateur radio operators that keep an eye on trail cams and just smoke signal and whatnot to see if there's fires happening. Very important service they do, and they have a network of radio operators that will communicate during these fire checks and throughout fire situations like Palisades and the Eaton Fire to make sure that you know new ones aren't popping up, they're not growing, change in wind, all, all kinds of that stuff. If you would be interested in doing something like that, if you were in the Orange County area, I will drop a link so you can check them out. And so I don't forget, also, thank you everybody who reached out to me. I think that I've never gotten more people that have reached out to make sure that my family was okay and also asked about Gordon West. 
For reference, I'm in Cerritos, California. I'm well away from the fires. It would have to burn through Los Angeles downtown proper and through a, a ton of space to be able to even get to somewhere that, that might endanger me or my extended family, which all generally live in Cerritos. As well, Gordo, he's, he's well down further in Costa Mesa, which you can see even further south there by Huntington Beach. So we were okay, but but thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Of course, the biggest impact that we saw was homes being burned, Altadena in particular. Of course, the Palisades too, both. A tremendous devastation. But, but take a look at that orange and look at it covering over the town of Altadena. Those were areas that were burnt completely to the ground. Many homes lost, people that were displaced, that evacuated. I know many people, my uh, cousins included, that were in Pasadena, which is right next door to Altadena, that were evacuated from their homes and others that were given evacuation warnings. And we were always one phone call away from somebody potentially crashing on our couch. And that happened across the board to thousands of people. So, I, you know, my heart goes out to everybody because that's tremendous devastation. But now let's compare and contrast what happened with Asheville, right? So if we remember... When the hurricane effect happened uh, to North Carolina, South Carolina, parts of Tennessee, other areas, you can see from the satellite image that that block of black that kind of goes up through Florida and up into the East Coast, those are areas where power was completely gone. And if you know the area, the geographic area made it almost impossible once the water eroded everything for, for help to get in and people to get out. So they had to be in the disaster, live in the disaster. And after losing the internet and cell phones, because that all got taken out too, the only form of communication they had was amateur radio or wireless communication. So FRS, GMRS, CB, you know, Starlink. Starlink got used heavily. That was an incredible asset to the people. But the amateur radio repeater that was servicing Asheville ended up being such an, a tremendous asset and became what you know what I call would be a textbook case of amateur radio being the thing that worked as a communication method. It's not like that couldn't happen in California, but you also have to compare that in California, we have hundreds of repeaters along most of our coastal ranges. So even if we had lost Mount Wilson, we would have been covered by many different repeaters. And those repeater sites where the amateur radios are at are usually home of first responder repeaters as well. There is a tremendous network of communication here in Southern California, which sounds like it differed from areas like Asheville and North Carolina. And if you'd like to know more of the true impact and value that amateur radio brought to the community in and around Asheville, North Carolina. I will link to my emergency communications lesson learned from Hurricane Helene, which, again, amazing shout out to Thomas Witherspoon, K4SWL, who was kind of like giving us updates via his blog and the service he does. He's a YouTuber as well. Amazing guy. Love Thomas. But also Dan Mar, K2DMG. Dan was the net op for the repeater that, that basically brought the community together and made the communication there possible and, most importantly, effective. He, he did an amazing job. Again, just cannot say enough about both these gentlemen and the, the effort that they did to bring their community together and help. So if you want a lesson learned in what can happen in a disaster – Look more towards Asheville with regards to amateur radio and communication. Taking nothing away from California, it's just we, we were not as impacted as, as these folks were. Now, I have reached out to a couple of people to potentially bring on the show or do a recording with to kind of hear their firsthand experience in Palisades and the fires there, as well as Eaton, whatever information I can get, I'll bring to you all, and the effect of amateur radio. I would like to point out that, you know, there, there's a big distinction between a hurricane and really that fast-moving water and a fire. I hope you appreciate it. There's a large difference there. But with the wildfires, and particularly the speed at which they kind of moved, the only option was to grab what you could and leave. And the people had the capability to do that, right? They they had the ability to get out of Dodge, even if it was on foot. Juxtaposed to Asheville, a lot of those houses got swept away with the fast-moving water, and the roads swept away, and they couldn't get out. That's why that, that death toll is still growing, even though we're months later, because they're still finding people, unfortunately, right? The disasters themselves are, are vastly different. And while, yes, those individuals could have evacuated before the roads had, had been damaged, it 
also quickly transpired that the very disaster was eroding their capability to get away, right? I hope everybody understands that a fire is a thing that you look at and you can you can get away from it. Yeah, people have been encircled by fire. That's a really bad situation too, but it's not necessarily the same as a disaster point of view. So you should, as always, prepare however you can common sense, right? Bring it into mind of the real disasters in your area. Here in California, we have wildfires, we have earthquakes. On the East Coast and in Florida, you got hurricanes, right? Those are all things, tornadoes, right? There's other areas of the country, tornado alley, right? That's why they call it that. Your disasters have their own unique characteristics of devastation that they can apply and the real danger they bring to human beings and the structures that we live in in our property. So being prepared for those disasters, as only you know best when you're living in that area, is something you should do. Always have the 10 essentials with you in your car, on your person, in your home, something quick you can grab. Make sure you got food and water for everybody in your home, including your four-legged friends and pets. Make sure you got everything like that covered. And be prepared with a communications plan. And yes, that could include amateur radio. It might want to also include a satellite beacon of some kind, a satellite messenger like a Garmin, and potentially something like a Starlink. Yeah, that's a great asset. These are all things that you should take your time, sit down, and think about what you're true needs are. I've done videos on radio communications in emergencies. I have spent a lot of time thinking about it, although I've never been personally deploying radios during a disaster, but I've been through a lot of earthquakes, thankfully no fire that I've had to deal with, and all these situations, including being out of natural gas and out of power from being involved in with an earthquake, a damaging earthquake in the Whittier Narrows back in the 80s, have taught me a lot of like, okay, this is kind of what I should have for my area that I live in. And you should look at it too, respectfully, because most Mother Nature is not messing around, and I have a feeling, you know, just inevitably we're going to experience more and more of this as time goes on. So I'll link some of my videos in the description for this video. You might want to go take a look. I would appreciate it. I would love your feedback as well. Post below in the comments to this video with anything you'd like to mention about the fires or what you've learned from any of the situations and maybe what you're preparing. I would appreciate it. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.